Spock and Kirk 2.0 from the Star Trek fan series New Voyages tell us what it's like to helm the Starship Enterprise from the relative safety of upstate New York. Plus, John Walsh overstays his welcome at the Consumer Electronics Show just to make sure we didn't miss a thing. And enjoy the dulcet tones of folk troubadours ever we fall. Pedro Monesesiantados, por favor. It's Attack of the Show! Pick up on this. Attack of the show. I'm right. Kevin Pereira. I'm Will O'Neill. It's a, and I'm glad you are, Will. Yes, every me too. day, every day. Don't Thur go change Thursday. It. Thursday is the new Friday. It really is for us. We are taking tomorrow off. We needed a, a full, full uh, Margarita Friday. That's what I'm talking about. So, it's tough doing this four days a week. It's, it's really is. It really is. Rolling out of bed around noon. Uh, kind of having the having the driver get you here like five minutes before the show. I mean, man, it's it's a tough life. They, but, but I am getting used to it. Though. They screwed up my latte twice this week, uh, and I was about to kill. But uh, mm. we are taking the break. You are not though, because tomorrow we're running a best of show. The best bits. Yes, if you the, will. Apparently, there was some stuff that was actually worth watching this mm. week. So tomorrow you got a full hour of it, which is good to see it over again. Right. But the weekend's coming up. Mm. We won't be here to really warn you for it on a no. Friday. So we're gonna do it today. Let's do it. Yeah. Thursday uh, is the new Friday. It is. It is. And the NFL playoffs oh, are in high gear this weekend, very so about we've got that. our old friend Jimmy the Geek coming back yep. to really give us some tips and some pointers. Mm. And you're thinking to yourself, yep. well, you know, any 12-year-old with Madden could be a Jimmy the Geek. Yeah. Not true. He's got some infide, uh, inside info. Yes, he does. That's yes, he does. really, really going to help. And you're you a big gambler, weekend. aren't you? Huge gambler. That's what I heard. Huge. Yeah, yeah. I have really. to gamble through my brother because I'm not old enough. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, plus, we're going to take talk to two guys who cannot live in a world without Kirk and Spock. Oh, yeah, that's tough. So they made their own series. That's good. And I, what I like is that their series is, is actually serious. They're not like yeah. these parody, tongue-in-cheat kind of, oh, we're going to do a slapstick comedy. Yeah. They're kind of staying true to it. Now, what's I, it called? Uh, what is it called? It's Star I'll, never, I'll Never Get Late Again? It's not. It's New Voyages. Oh, because I never, um, that's the one that you made. I'll, I'll Never Get Late Again assumes that they've been late before. Oh, there's most Star right. Trek fans. Okay. Exactly. As we know. Uh, of course, Big Thursday, mm -hmm. the Pope's here. Hey. Yeah. He's hey. hanging out. Good to see you, buddy. How's but it first, going? The pontiff. You know, I, I hate talking on an empty stomach, so mm. how about uh, we fill it up with some feet, huh? The baby's oh, hungry. Oh, you want to know what's new in the world? Yes, Sarah. Why Give it to are you asking us. me? Oh, right. <laughs> feed face. Domain registrar GoDaddy.com has started closing down BitTorrent sites, starting with MyBitTorrent. Now, GoDaddy also registered popular torrent sites like Torrent Spy and Mini Nova and ISO Hunt, which may be next on the chopping block. But now, while GoDaddy is allowing MyBitTorrent to transfer to another registry, this might be the beginning of the end, my friend. So hurry up and finish downloading up Periscope already. It's okay, nobody's watching except your ISP and the MPAA and, and Dick Cheney. Now, camera company Nikon announced today that it will officially stop producing almost all of its old-school film cameras and going almost entirely digital. In related news, the amalgamated pneumatic tube company released a defiant statement proclaiming, we're not going anywhere. Marvel Comics re revealed today that Spider-Man is getting another costume makeover. Yes, the new look designed by Marvel editor-in-chief Joe Quesada himself will be introduced in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man as a gift to Peter Parker from Iron Man alter ego Tony Stark, hence the Iron Man color scheme. Fan uproar in three, two, one. Fight Club director David Fincher is set to direct a thriller based on a graphic novel about America's first serial killer. Torso, written by Brian Michael Bendis, is about the true story of Capone buster Elliot Ness, hunting a killer who leaves victims' torsos floating in rivers. This, along with the severed head from Seven, should eventually get Fincher a complete body of work. <laughs> body. Get it? <laughs> Sorry. The a &E Network is busy producing a brand new reality series set to star Kiss Demonoid Gene Simmons. This begs the question, what the hell does a &E stand for anymore? It ain't art, and it sure as hell ain't entertainment. More bad news coming out of the Xbox 360 camp. This time, GameSpot is reporting that several anticipated titles are getting pushed back. College Hoops 2K6 is one of them, Top Spin 2, Frame City Killer, all set for January releases have now been bumped to still as yet unannounced dates. But hey, I mean, don't fret. Xbox 360 owners can still use your console as a nightlight, hmm? or because of some heating issues, you could fry eggs on it. Love that. No frying pan is necessary. Or maybe you could use it as the world's most dangerous crib mobile. <laughs> that 
<laughs> not going to end well. Now, a prejudice map. A prejudice map has popped up online. It's not only fun, it's also informative. Let me tell you about this. Collecting data from Google search phrases, the site maps out stereotypes and organizes them by country. All right, so for example, I now know that Australians are known for uncomplicated friendliness and an obsession with sport and that people from Kenya like metaphors and fast running. And yet there's no entry on, in the map for uh, the Ukraine. So I don't really understand why they're let off so easily. They're a bunch of lousy egg painters. You didn't hear me say that. And finally, a family from Warwick, Rhode Island has put themselves up for sale on eBay. Jojo Gator and his wife, Jackie Kidney, those are not made up names, by the way, are offering themselves and six other family members, including children, as servants for hire for someone living ideally on a tropical island. It's not a bad idea, actually. Starting bid is $1.5 million for five years of service. So I don't know about you, but it seems like a steal to me. Do you know how much children, white, healthy children, go for these days? Pretty penny. That's the feed. Excuse me, I have some bidding to do. <laughs> Ah, wow. human auctions on eBay. I'm That's telling always you, a great I may advantage. have to buy one of those white babies. You should. You should. Yeah. You've said that four times this week. Would uh, you just get yeah. a PayPal account? I, I should. I, Jeez. I got to hook it up. Uh, so, you know, we were talking about the weekend. It is coming up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I we mean, should... our, our weekend kind of technically starts today. Well, yes. If you want to think about we it. are very special and privileged, yes. Mm. But for, for, for the common folk, the weekend is starting on Saturday. So we should, we, we should probably give them some stuff to look forward to, no? That's a good idea. Yeah. What do you have in You're mind? You're such a nice, nice guy, us. Kevin. Always look, looking out for the common man. I do it. I do it for the kids. What I do, the GP we call him. Mm. Uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, okay. which is normally, you know, that's that's your cue to, to kick into REM sleep. Uh, last week or, or a couple weeks ago with Lazy Sunday, mm -hmm. good stuff. The Lonely you, Island you guys. You came in on yep. Monday. You were pretty stoked about Dude, the red, what? Pretty Cold? stoked about that. Of Narnia. Narnia. The red right. vines are crazy delicious. We know this now, we and do. and they have really these SNL digital shorts as mm -hmm. they branded them. I think they've given us a reason to actually watch, or like, at least just come in on Monday and find them on the interweb. Well, that too, that too. But it could be funny, and, <laughs> and don't you want to see it when it first hits though? Or yeah. do you really want to find out about it on a message board and be I'm, five minutes late to the party? I don't know. I'm just going to come I mean, to work on Monday and find out from you. That's I true. feel like Lazy Sunday could have been a fluke. I mean, <gasps> the Dane Cook episode, that was that was yeah. a real stinker. That's true. So, that I don't know. Maybe he's not just, you know, good, like, in, in skits. Mm -hmm. skit could be. Kind of it could be the writing. You never know. Yeah. But I trust the Lonely Island troupe, and I, I'm starting to yeah. trust their digital shorts. But okay. this, this Saturday, Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. And uh, uh, she's hosting. And we got Death Cab for Cutie performing. I Not love bad, them. right? Yeah, wait, with Scarlett Johansson is going to be on the show? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm watching it. Of course you are. In slow mo on your oh, TV. Oh, yes. And rewind. Of course. And of course. pause. You are a sick, rewind. sick man. Will. You know she's like under 20. Actually, yeah, that's, that's even that, better. That makes maybe. it hotter. Yeah. What that does make it a lot hotter. Poor, poor Sarah. She just doesn't understand. Now, everything. I know the weekend's coming, you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and good tips. Good tips for all you yeah. out there. But did you know that uh, the guy who shot, pooped John Paul II? Mm. He's actually released from prison today. Don't let really? anybody out of jail these days. That was like uh, 25 years. Whoa! What was that? What the? Oh. Uh, oh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, oh the Pope killer. killer. There he was. Oh. Well, at least he got halfway through the A block. I guess he did. <laughs> <laughs> Better luck next time. Oh. Well, I guess he's going back. We're taking your chat questions yes. today, folks. We're we also wanna... going to hell. <laughs> we are. Yes, yeah, we, we are. are. <laughs> In a handbag. ticket. <laughs> we want to milk this relationship Thursday, wow. so uh, why don't you... Oh, that's... Okay. You There's like already that? one animated GIF of you wow. on the net. We don't need two. Yeah. Look like how others Just, uh, yeah, I get born it. on a farm. Wow. Relationship Thursday, give us a call, or you can chat with us as well. Head on over to chat.g4tv.com, and you can email us through our web form at attackoftheshow.com slash ask us. Now, when we... Uh, finish mopping up the old studio. John Walsh will sweep up the crumbs off the Consumer Electronics Show floor, and Fresh Ink will bring you that new comic smell you love so much. Mm. Attack of the show, baby. Attack. Where do you go when you want all the newest comics, but none of that fingertip schmutz? Well, you come to Fresh Ink, of course. We want to know what is hot off the presses. Right. That's what we want. And, and who do you go to? You, of course. The I'm... lovely, the talented, the premium blended. Oh, Blair yeah. Butler. Happy to have lied. Congrats on that, by oh, the way. Oh, thank you very much. Very nice. good stuff. So what do we have in the, in the realm of the comics? What are we looking at this week? Well, this week, actually, we're, we're going to first take a little hop and step back. Oh. Because last week, the holidays threw off the shipping schedule, which 
for devoted comics fans like myself was very, uh, it, was, it was hard not I to I saw have... several of you strung out in the alley near the shop waiting for your next fix. Yeah, exactly. Just waiting, waiting for the, to peel off those Mylar bags and... And it came, and, and it yeah. arrived, uh, right. Iron, Man ex uh, Iron Man Extremis? Yes, Extremis. It's, um, Iron it's a six-part series. It's, um, I like Iron Man a lot. I like Ultimate Iron, Iron Man uh, a lot more than the regular Iron Man. But I have to say, this is great. Um, it's by Warren Ellis, and uh, more importantly, it's got this amazing art by, I believe his name's Adi Granov. I might be mispronouncing that, but I just think the art's beautiful. A lot of people are really angry because the shipping schedule, this started shipping in 2004 in November. We're only up to issue five. I don't care. I think it's gorgeous. I love the way it's drawn. Worth the wait, uh, indeed. It's, it's like. worth the wait. Um, and I think if you can go back and buy the first four issues, you should, because sure. a lot of the meat of, the, of this, uh, this story arc are in the first couple well, of now, issues. Well, what now, is, what is going on in this particular issue? Because if, if right. you're just jumping in like I am to issue right. five, I'm seeing like a bunch of different type of Iron Men, like, or at least the, right. the suits in different phases. What exactly is going on in this that issue? That was a little bit of a flashback to the original uh, Iron Man costume, um, which was that sort of gray, bulky, before you got the really souped out, um, right. you know, Gold Before Iron Man went all metrosexual on us. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, this is basically, um, Warren Ellis has written stuff like Planetary and The Authority, which I really love. And he's sort of taking Iron Man and kind of exploring the fact that Tony Stark is a weapons manufacturer who fights crime. There's a little bit of right. conflict, conflict of interest, interest there. there but... And um, this is a series where an extremist group gets uh, a hold of, of a, a iron, sort of an Iron Man-like hmm. technology and starts using what's, it. Uh, what's your verdict on this one, then? Is this a I buy? Say, Is this a browse? I say buy. I mean, uh, a lot of people are frustrated that it takes so long to come out. I don't care. I think it's great. Sure. I think Marvel should start making uh, posters of those full, uh, full Iron Man layouts. I agree. They're, They're really, really great. Painted paintings. art. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So get it while it's here, at least. Get it while it's here and, and buy the back the issues. Way. They're still around. So. All yeah. right. Moving on to Gotham Central, which. Right. Wow. This one was breathtaking. Yeah. Are, yeah. you, are you being facetious? Oh, very much so. See, I, this, I, this, was, this was like a, the, the pillow to my cubicle today. Like, just really? Just knocked I, me right out. I couldn't disagree more. I, I do, couldn't is this, is, do we have to really, does it come down to this? It's going to be fisticuffs. I'll punch you in the throat. Let later. me tell you why. This comic, no one is buying this comic, and they're nuts not to. There is one issue left. There are 40 issues in this series. Greg Rucka and uh, Ed Brubaker have been taking turns on it, but for me, Greg Rucka's stories are always better. Basically, this is cops. It's like NYPD set in Gotham. So it's these cops struggling to do their jobs under the shadow of this vigilante, Batman, who's basically, you know, doing the work for them half the time. Right. It's really gritty. It reminds me at times of The Shield. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of corruption. But now let's talk about this particular issue, though. Right. Because I, the, the premise, which you've set up, sounds phenomenal. Right. Uh, the artwork, eh, a little uh, bit on the Snoresville side for me. But, right. I'm not crazy. I mean, the art's But this particular issue, it seemed like nothing really happened at all. Well, you're coming off, and I wanted, this was another shipping schedule screwed up because of the holidays. Mm. Issue 38 had one of the biggest... Holy crap moments that I've had reading comics. It killed one of the two biggest characters in this series. Uh, the big okay. characters are Detective Rene Montoya and Detective Crispus Allen. There are a couple other characters, but Allen was murdered by another cop. It's, I mean, I'm sorry, I All spoiled right. it for a no, long time. No, no, that's people, fine, that's fine. Let's, let's talk about this issue, though. What's the verdict, though? Should the, we buy this one, browse it, or burn it? Buy it, and if the awards this series has been garnering isn't enough to convince you, I, I don't know what I can say to convince you. You should be buying this. You should pick up the Half-A-Life right. trade paperback, which won the Eisner Award. Could be the arrested development of the comic world, then, right? But no, because it's not funny at all. I mean, yeah, okay, well, it, it is. And the fact in the that it's decent that... and no one's watching. Right, exactly, gotcha. absolutely. All right, uh, moving right along to Ultimate <laughs> Extinction. Right. Um, Ultimate Extinction, this is... You know, there you have secret wars in the regular Marvel Universe. Why not do a massive all-world <laughs> universe combining? You don't sound jaded by this concept no. at all, Blair. Again, this is another Warren Ellis comic, and nobody does cosmic drama like Warren Ellis. You know, he brought the multiverse back and made it really cool in a lot of uh, his Wildstorm books. But um, basically, all the uh, heroes in the Marvel Universe are being menaced by Galactus. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the ultimate Silver Surfer in this issue. We get the ultimate Misty Knight, who's one of the Daughters of the Dragon. And we get who may be the ultimate Moon Shadow or Madam Hydra with no hair, who needs Rogaine. I'm not sure who this character is. A lot of people are speculating. Um, that, but if it's Moonshadow, it's really funny because he's bringing back like an old character from the Defenders era. That's well, I can't tell. I can't tell if you're a fan of this or not. So, what, what would be your verdict on this? I, one? I have to give it a cosmic 
Uh, I mean, you know, wow. I, oh, that was... it's it's not bad. It's not good. It's the first issue. I it's mean, a it's, browse. it's a browse. All it's right. got some stuff that's decent, but it's just it's not like gripping me. And all right, moving on to the uh, the, the the comic by the uh, the Smashing Pumpkins front man, <laughs> Jimmy Corrigan. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to. The smartest kid on earth. Right. Uh, this is by Chris Ware. This is my indie pick, and uh, it's been. A, this comic came out in 2000. It's out in paperback. The reason I'm bringing it up now is that Chris Ware is being featured in the Masters of American Comics show that's going on at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles right now. This guy's art. It's very spare. He has a, a completely unique and distinguished um, graphic style, and this is just a really haunting heartbreaking comic it's about this guy who's just got this really crappy life it's it's actually like a couple generations of the men in the corrigan right. family and he's it's, harvey picard without talent or, it, exa or drive. exactly like he really is sort of imagining he has you know he's imagining himself to be this like really smart little heroic kid sometimes but i mean it's just it's really heartbreaking i think the art is is gorgeous some people for some reason really think it's almost too blocky and mm -hmm. i just think this what do, is, what do, you, is, do you think buy, browse, or burn? That's the question. Absolutely buy it. This really? is one of, one of my favorite comics out there today. Fantastic. I yeah. hope everybody does. Blair, thank, thank, you. thank you again for coming on. We appreciate Thanks, it. Kevin. I'm glad it didn't come to fisticuffs. Yeah, Sorry I know. about that. I know that got a little edgy. Oh, well, my apologies. It's all right. As usual, be sure to check out our show notes for more on these comics. Now, still ahead, we talk to the Kirk and Spock from the best Star Trek fan series on the net. And John Walsh finds some products at the Consumer Electronics Show that are actually useful. Believe it or not, they exist, and you're going to see them right after this. Stay tuned. At every CES, there's the gear you want. And then there's the gear that you need. It's the kind of decision that those of us without Pereira-sized contracts or egos have to make every day. So here's the practical side of the Consumer Electronics Show. It's AOTS the CES, sponsored by Acura. I am so tired of having to look in the back of my television to check what, where my inputs are connected. How can you help me? Well, now HP has a solution for you. The inputs are on the front, yeah. and there is a nice tunnel underneath the TV uh -huh. where you can put all the good cables. I actually yeah. don't have that many video components. Yes. Yeah, can you help me out with that? Well, something yeah. fell off the back of the truck, maybe? I was a big fan of the first generation of Toshiba Cosmeo uh, Windows Media Center PCs, but they weren't high definition, so I spit on them. What have you got for me now? Oh, well, we have high definition, so you're in luck. We've got the Cosmeo uh, Next Generation. It's got HD DVD. It'll be out in uh, late March. In addition, you'll be able to also still play your regular DVD movies as well as your CDs, as well as read and write. Hey, buddy, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Answer me, bitch. So listen, pal, I have an MP3 player. Yes. I have an iPod video. Yes. I have a digital camera. Yes. I want it all in one device. What can you do for me? I can hand you this camera right here. It's a Samsung Digimax i6. It's a super slim credit card sized digital camera with a two and a half inch LCD screen on the back. What it has is the ability to download movies. You can download TV shows. You can put your MP3 files on here. Anything up to the size that your SD card will hold. Uh, will it increase my cup size? Uh, yes. Yes, it will. Uh, tremendously. When I vacation with my celebrity friends, Tim Reed and Valerie Perrine, I find that I often run out of memory on my digital camera's memory card. Can you help me? Yes, I can. Memorex today announced the Travel Sync, which is basically a portable file transfer device. You can offload files on the go, copy them, give them to a friend, clear out your flash card on your camera, and it really requires no PC at all. So I don't have to go vacationing with Tim and Valerie with my laptop. It's a really handy device, especially for business travelers or anyone that's on the go. So, Will, I know it's probably mm -hmm. really hard to narrow it down, but what was yep. the overall biggest winner at CES? The one thing the one that thing. I, I've got to get. Everybody's talking gotta get. about it. Well Everyone was going nuts about HDTV, but for the second year, Sling Media made a pretty big splash with the Sling Box that 
Mm -hmm. It has this new feature. It's a Sling Player Mobile. Very cool. It's basically like a TiVo-like device on a Windows Mobile, mobile-based Oh, um, nice. Smartphone. So, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, is mm -hmm. this something I can go to the store and pick up now? Um, no, we have to wait till the spring. Don't you love but that about CES? You know, yeah, Here this is, is really cool. You can't have it yet. Nope, not yet. But, <laughs> but what's great about it is that you can be sitting at Starbucks drinking your non-fat soy latte Have you been spying on me? Um, Kevin's been spying exactly on you. Exactly what I, I ordered. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty cool device. A but fishy. Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, so, you know. All right. We'll have to get you one of those. Okay. Yeah, well. And my birthday's in the spring. Is it really? Yeah. Timing's perfect. You don't mind. It'd be great. Well. That wraps up our CS coverage, uh, but there was another convention going on in Las Vegas. Uh, this one features, are you ready for this? I don't know. Women who sleep with men on camera for money. Oh, I love that convention. Yeah, I got to give me some of that action. Mm. It's pretty cool. Don't look at me. <laughs> be sure to come back next week, yeah, as we check. <laughs> oh, man. I just Josh and Will after the show, you and me, okay. behind the bleachers. Okay, we'll come back next week. We're going to check out, <laughs> oh, man, some more coverage of the Adobe Vienna News convention. And since we were in Las Vegas, we figured we'd bug our old friend Jimmy the Geek to get his playoff picks. How do you feel about that? All right, we're getting into the teeth of the NFL playoffs, and there is no better man to have, well, than our next guest. He offers betting advice based on video game simulations, and he's off to a pretty good 2006. Here he is, live from Las Vegas. It's Jimmy the Geek. Cave. Jimmy, how the hell are you, my friend? I'm so Jake. I'm Jacob, baby. Mrs. Geek's in the hospital with a heart thing, which means... One couch, many beers, and no bitching this weekend. Oh, oh J Jim, I, I certainly hope she's all right, bud. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right, well, in any event, you know, you, you went one and one last week, so you were all over the Steelers, but you missed the boat on the Giants, Jim. Kevy, I know nuns who put out more than the Giants did. But anyways, I was impressed with Carolina, and they go on the road again this weekend against the Chicago Bears. And my research indicates that the Bears' defense is overhyped, overrated, and come Sunday, overmatched. Madden 06 has Carolina winning by ground and by air, and I agree. What's more, Jimmy the Weatherman says this northern front is going to stay put, and while a westerly current pushes any nasty stuff towards the east, Game time temperature will be a balmy 44 degrees, and that spells disaster for the Bears. Kevy, that's information most handicappers can only dream about giving you. Pay Carolina and the three points. It's my forecast for pain special of the week. Uh, Jimmy, I, I got to hand it to you, buddy. I'm impressed. You and about two dozen strippers between here and Topeka, baby. Yeah, yeah, touche. What else, Jim? All right, part two of our NFL playoff, Daily Double, baby. The last time the Colts played a meaningful game, it was still baseball season. Look for them to come out a bit rusty and a little anxious against a tough-as-nail Steeler team. Madden 06 sees them winning this game, and so do I. But if pick and winner straight up was the name of the game, there'd be a Kevin the Geek on every corner, baby. The big boys play with point spreads, baby, and the Colts ain't covering no 10-point spread. Take the Steelers and the points. It's my professional gambler pick of the week. Steelers and the points, good enough. And uh, actually, I'm almost afraid to ask, but do, do you have anything else, Jim? I'm glad you asked, Gabby. Big news in your neck of the woods. Our good buddy Brad Pitt managed to slip one past the goalie, leading us to our final bet. Will Angelina Jolie give birth to a boy or a girl? Right now, girl has a slight edge on boy, but my research indicates that the position in which conception occurred is conducive to producing males. And thus, we are going with the underdog, Take Jolie, popping out what could turn into the most accomplished swordsman in the next half century. It's my lucky son of a bitch special of the week. Well, uh, Jim, I, I really don't know what else to say, buddy. <laughs> I will bow a thank you, Kevy baby. These are all money makers. All right, well then, uh, thank you it is. That's Jimmy the Geek, ladies and gentlemen. Live from Las Vegas, I think. Now, clean yourself up and hurry back because we're going to watch as Sega Labs blow stuff up real nice-like, and we're going to find out what exactly would possess two men to put themselves into the shoes of Shatner and Nimoy, and it's all coming up next. You're watching G4, America's number one podcasted cable network.
Attack of the Show is still here like it always is. Now, we're going to visit the virtual demolition experts at Sega Labs in a little bit. Plus, we may find it's a little time to answer a few of your chat questions. And also, get your lighters in the air for our musical guest, Ever We Fall, part of Live Music Thursday, of course, presented by Dentine Fire. But now, Network Suits dry docked the USS Enterprise back in 1969. That was a long time ago. But... James Colley and Jack Marshall have led a federation of fellow Trekkers on the most ambitious voyage in fan history. Kirk to Farragut, get us back quick, Rand, and stand by to raise the deflector shields as soon as we're aboard. Yes, sir. Shh. Red alert shields at full intensity. <laughs> You know what to do, Mr. Kark. I see. Rand, plot on this up, course. Let's see if we can take some of the heat off the Klingon. Welcome to James, Kirk, and Jeff. Yep. Spock, thanks for coming to the show, you guys. So tell me a little bit about New Voyages. This is, this is the original show, but it's not like recreation of old episodes. No, no. It's, actually... uh, the original Star Trek was supposed to be a five-year mission, and NBC foolishly canceled it after three years, so the fans have never wanted to let it go, so we thought... Let's let's relive that and let's let's pick it up where they ended the show. So it's new stories based on the old the old show. So the, is this in response to you felt like there were so many fans who were just they were begging for that final year or two to just get made, and you guys have have picked up the torch and gone well, running with it. We, we were fans ourselves, you know, growing up with the show and wanting to wanted to be part of that universe. So yes, y y the fans never wanted to let that particular version of Star Trek go. So it was our decision to just relaunch it. But as I understand, it's not it's not a satire. It's not a parody. This is it's very serious. And what was uh, I mean? Did you? Was there any sort of a decision that had to be made of, you know, should we get kind of silly with this? Because obviously Star Trek hasn't been around, this particular show hasn't been around for so long. Or was it always like very cut and dry, we need to just keep the thing going? Yeah, no, it would be it would be heresy to, you know, to, <laughs> to make a spoof out of the original Star Although Trek. Although others so. have. They have, certainly they have. But and that wasn't what you guys were into. No, no, our decision was just let, let's bring it back and let's, let's do what was never done in 1969. Now, Jeff, you're Spock. I mean, are you sticking true to the Leonard Nimoy Spock? I mean, have you have you uh, followed his work? Do you study his? Had yes you study his and movements? no. I wasn't really big into Star Trek before uh, New Voyages started. Before I met up with James. Oh, really? So I took a crash course, and while I am trying to maintain true to what Leonard brought to the character Spock. There's been eight Batmans, five Supermans, like a bunch of James Bond, but there's only ever been one Spock. I'm I'm viewing the role as that, as an actor portraying a role made famous by one particular person being Nimoy. So, you know, playing Spock, it's, it's, it's you have your own character. Sure. Well, did you guys like flip a coin? Did you both want to be Kirk? Or were you always going to be Spock? <laughs> Everybody wants to be Kirk. <laughs> Everybody wants to be Kirk. I was just saying, I mean, that's like the cool guy. Well, you know, it was my project. I started it and, and uh, was so the principal get financier. So, I'm Kirk, the so big chair was mine. Spock? Yeah. Now, have you ever been recognized out in public as, hey, you're the Kirk guy from New Voyages? I was actually, um, I had the good fortune of meeting William Shatner last year, and the two of us were, were at a convention table, and from behind us, uh, a couple of voices yelled out, hey, Kirk, and both he and I turned at the same time, and it was two of the writers from Paramount's Enterprise, and they were like, no, Bill, not you, we're talking to the kid. Well, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. got to be a kind yeah. of cool and somewhat frightening moment. Very frightening. You know, here's your childhood. Uh, <laughs> I'm you sorry. Know. I'm yeah. sorry. You're actually a better Kirk than me. So you're set, actually. I mean, for people who are familiar with Star Trek, watching the show, it looks pretty good. It's pretty accurate. Was that, how, I mean, how did you recreate that? Well, we had access to the original studio floor plans from the 1960s. Well, that's helpful. And we've spent about 10 years building that set. 10 years? 10 years building that oh, set. Oh, yeah. my. Wow. Yeah. I mean, did you start with a little model and then, you know, move into a living room type of a thing no. to see how it was all going to go? No, we just, you know, started, you know, taking the actual scale from the blueprint and, and grabbing the lumber and going. Wow. Now, the visual effects that you use now for for uh for your show are, are you know what's available now is much better than what was available <laughs> yes. in the late 60s so i guess it's in a way it's kind of the best of both worlds it's the old show with some mo a modern edge to you it you get the updated special effects i mean for our second episode in harm's way um our one special effects guru max rem a true diehard original series trek mm -hmm. fan i mean he's done a lot of work and if he were to charge us for each of the effect shots that he did over a million dollars worth wow. of like movie quality special effect shots over 200 of them a ridiculous amount and it's because he's such a fan he's watched the show for so long he can pull these ideas from memory and just create it something he sees in his mind create it on the computer which is great i mean it's great for you guys i guess what's also really validating i understand that 
people who are involved with the original Star Trek are involved with your show. Yes. DC Fontana, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, who, we also, who is all putting their hands in this? Part? Well, uh, DC Fontana was an associate producer of the original series sure. and wrote some of the better episodes. Yeah. And Walter Koenig, who portrayed the original uh, Chekhov, just came in and reprised the role for us. So, you know, not only do we have some of the original production people, but some of the original actors are coming on board the show as well. Do you think it's because they don't, they don't want Star Trek to die either? I mean, this might be the only way that they can continue something that they really yeah. care about. I mean, there's, why? there's been a lot of sequels, but none of them, none of them have ever measured up to the message from the original series. And, mm -hmm. and, and nobody really wants to see that show go away. Wow. So, I, I mean, I, I guess it must be, it must feel really good to actually have people from old Star Trek, you know, I, I wrote old episodes, I was a character, and I really like you guys, I like what you're doing, I want to be part of it. I mean, to, be, to be validated by some yeah. of the people, the pros that have been working on Star Trek since its inception back in the 60s. I mean, we have the blessings of Rod Roddenberry, the son of Gene Roddenberry, who created Star Trek. So you have Rod Roddenberry, DC Fontana, Walter Koenig, and the list goes on and on. The cool thing is we are currently in negotiations with George Takei, who portrayed Mr. Sulu on the original show, and it looks like he's going to step up to the plate and come back to Star Trek once Howard, again. How is Howard's turn of about this. Maybe well, you know can, what? Maybe he can be Howard like is a, a huge Star Trek you know, fan, so if he wants to come, we'll off. take him too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, thank for you. talking a little bit about your show, and best of luck to you. Sounds you know. like you're on a roll. Definitely. Thanks. If you've got one of those cool Star Trek talking computers, you know the ones, tell it to visit StarTrekNewVoyages.com for more information. And now, get ready to catch Ever We Fall. They're gearing up for their live performance. But first, we'll roll up to Sega Labs to see if their effects are as special as advertised. Hey, guys and gals, but mostly gals, to be honest. We have an official Attack of the Show MySpace page, and we're coming for you. Yeah, that's right, our super production assistant, Jeremy Hache, may be contacting some lovely ladies to see if you have what it takes to earn a special guest appearance on this very show. So there it is. There's the address. Check out our page on the old MySpace, and be on the lookout for Jeremy. I swear, he's legit. Maybe a little creepy. I'm just saying. Don't give him any too much personal information. But he's legit, so get in touch with him. Now... Sega wanted stuff blowed up real good for their Xbox 360 offering full auto, so they unleashed the pyromaniacs at Sega Labs, who documented every single explosion and every near-miss shrapnel incident in full contact webisodes. So here's a look, and uh, be prepared to duck. At Sega Labs, we know that research and testing is the hallmark of developing games that stand tall. By using the latest particle physics computational models, our scientists are engineering advanced physics collision damage. But we use more than machines to engineer lifelike destruction. Our engineers are hard at work in the field experimenting with actual explosives. We were trying to uh, create uh, just a, uh, a smorgasbord of different looks. We want to show the capability of Sega's technology to really show incredible subtlety in the detail of something like an explosion. Today, they are going to explode a porta potty. With porta potty, I was uh, we actually built a cannon inside the the underneath the toilet seat, and I was looking to create a kind of a a blast of fire upward out of the toilet seat. It seemed like it pretty much just blew up. In researching Full Auto's exothermic reactions, Sega engineers have determined that an exploding compound will have a negative effect on a nearby object. The propane tank was to create a, a, a white fireball that was uh, really intense. Everyone knows that a quality high-speed car chase features the explosion of a stack of barrels. The barrels all had a lazy spiral of this deck cord inside, but then there was also a canister of gasoline with more of the deck cord under it. So the gasoline goes off, the, the, uh, the cutting spiral goes off, and the whole thing just goes boom. The level of detail on the new Xbox 360 is so high that we really wanted to go over the top and, and try and challenge it by showing the kind of detail that can be had. There's all this stuff going on, especially when it's playing something like full auto, is going to really you know, 
uh, show that off. And so that's what this is about. To view all the webisodes, and there's some good stuff, visit segalabs.com. Now, after these carefully crafted youth marketing messages, we turn our stage over to Ever We Fall. show Star Trek The Next Generations, Michael Dorn will show us some Klingon sword fighting techniques while we chuckle at its forehead. Plus, we sent John Walsh to uncomfortably ogle the adult video news convention, but to be fair, he was going anyway. And Chris Gore lassoes the week's best DVDs and stores them in the DVD Tuesday Corral. That's all on Tuesday's Attack of the Show. And now, let's hear it for Ever We Fall! <laughs> Your painted eyes as a parasite moves in, and so my person brown. She's in us and she's
with these guys on their upcoming album, We Are But Human. And for more on these guys, check out our show notes as well. Keep us within arm's reach here on this show because we're reading your email and chat questions almost immediately after a few of these. We are the pod people. What? But don't be afraid. Oh. No, no, no. We don't want to consume your identity. We just, we just want you to stick our podcastables in your pocket, <laughs> if you will. That sounds dirty. Yeah, it is. Visit attackoftheshow.com or the iTunes podcast directory for our latest offerings. And a reminder, starting this week, we're no longer live on Fridays. You heard it here. Mm. Instead, we're collecting all of the week's best bits and shoehorning them all into one show. Oh, no, that's a... That's a horse shoe. shoe. Ah, that's crap. A... I don't know the difference. No, Tune good. in. Yeah. You, know what, you know what I mean. You yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You'll see it. You're right? It'll be awesome. You want to do some chat? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Come on. No, no, no. Don't no, go no, to that I'm place. Stay in the happy place. I'm here. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish the show. Andy Bo Bandy wants to know. <laughs> hey, Will. Which do you think is better, cleavage or a side boob? What's oh, a side boob? I don't know. Oh, is that the under the, the armpit thing, boob? I'm actually a big fan of the butt cleavage thing that, uh, that uh, Beyonce made popular. You know, the little... Never mind. Next like question. When, you're, when your like string hangs out. No. Is, that, the, is yeah. that when the horseshoes yeah. are peeking oh, out from the daisies? Oh, you mean when your pants uh, are too tight and you got like the you love know, a handles? Little low. That's good too. Oh, yeah. really? I'm a fan of the side boob. Yeah. I don't know. The I don't side boob. I don't know what the hell the side, side boob is. Side yeah. boob's an indication of fake boob. Fair enough. That's all I'm saying. Right. Feels real to me, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I even bother? Okay, Dengen wants she to know, Kevin. Idea. Next gen consoles seem to have gotten off to kind of a shaky start. Is this good news for PC gaming? Uh, you know, there's a lot of. There was actually a recent article that's saying, you know, PC gaming's on the rise. Mm -hmm. Look at what Dell's doing. They're shipping yep. machines with four graphics cards. Exactly. Uh, you know, at one at some point, probably in the near future, PC in ga in console gaming are going to be one. Yeah. You know, as you can see, like you could say they're off to a shaky start, but they're off to a decent start considering all the extra functions yeah. they have and what they're able to do. So it's only a matter of time before they start sharing so media, then they start sharing the games. It's all just going to be one at some point. And Windows yeah. Vista actually should make it a little bit easier to You're right. you know, PC gaming as well. You're so. right. That's it, folks. Thanks for our guests, James Colley, Woo. Jeff Quinn, Blair Butler, and, of course, Ever We Fall. Yeah. Now, coming up next on Star Trek The Next right. Generation, the crew of the Enterprise encounters a planet run entirely by women. Awesome. Wait, why is that strange? Anyway, that's immediately following this very show, Star Trek The Next Generation, every night at 8 p.m. and 9 p.m., right here on G4.